graph I want us to see. You can't read it very well, but uh, knowledge is doubling every century. In by n up to 1900, the, the accumulative knowledge that you can put in an encyclopedia, get in a library or whatever, uh, it doubled about every century. By 1945, the, the, everything that we know and, and understand, science, chemistry, you name it, um, Knowledge was doubling every 25 years. 1982, knowledge was doubling every 12 to 13 months. Now, in 2020, um, IBM predicts knowledge is doubling every 11 to 12 hours. All that we know, all the sciences, all the applications, all the different things, you can figure this out by even looking at uh, driving your modern cars today. How much like are they a Model T? way beyond Model T. And this just keeps coming. The knowledge keeps building, keeps building, keeps building. Mankind was created by God to rule and subdue the earth. Genesis 1, 27 and 28. God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. And part of the way in which we subdue things is this knowledge that we keep growing in knowledge. We apply what we learn. Here's another creator creation thing. World population growth graph. Here we go. Same thing, 1750 uh, population. I can't, I can't remember exactly. It's about just under uh, about a million people, uh, a billion people on the planet. 1800, it grows, grows. Now look at what happens in 1950 and 2000 and then the projection. Uh, last month sometime they tell us that the, the population of the planet reached the 8 billion mark. And I can remember when it was 5 billion. And here we are, so the population keeps growing as well. So God said be fruitful and multiply. And that is what mankind has done. It has been fruitful and it has multiplied. So here's something I want us to ponder this morning. It says in Genesis 2, 7, then the Lord God formed man of dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. This word formed carries with it the idea of pottery, this idea of a potter making something out of clay. It's a potter's term. It's for fashioning. But what did God fashion? He fashioned a living being, man. Mankind, male and female, with amazing ability, a great collector of know-how, as we've seen already. If, if man's knowledge is doubling every 12 to 13 hours, it's only going to keep increasing in some ways. But this great collector, mankind, of all this knowledge is used for good and for evil. In fact, I think almost many of the things that are, are created are created to kill other people. We are just, just what we do. There's a reason for the term, I think, cracked pot, because that's what mankind is. Mankind has been formed and shaped by God, but it's, it's cracked because he has not had as his focus, mankind has not had as its focus, the creator. So just as mankind was created, shaped, so he now shapes and fashions, but not just things. Mankind also shapes things like ideas. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5, Paul is saying to the Corinthians, he says to us, we, the church, are destroying speculations and every lofty thing raised up against the knowledge of God. We are taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Well, you, you don't have to take anything captive if it is already safe. It's already domesticated. But mankind with his knowledge, with his know-how, does not like to be underneath the rule of God, creator. So here's God, he creates mankind, and mankind, the cracked pot, forms all kinds of things. And one of the biggest things that mankind forms is thoughts that are against God. 
It's like this in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 13 and 14 as well. Paul, in the midst of his talking to the church, how it grows and is, becomes mature, uh, he says, until we all attain to the unity of faith and the knowledge of the Son of God. So again, knowledge against knowledge. That's what we're talking about. There's a knowledge against knowledge. To a mature man, to the measure of the stature which belongs to the fullness of Christ. And Christ is the measure. Christ is the treasure. As a result, we are no longer to be children, tossed here and here and there by waves, carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men, by craftiness and deceitful scheming. So mankind, in his rebellion against God, has an ability that is given by God to think and reason and purpose. But he takes and does that against his very creator. So we're to grow into a mature man, which is knowledge, and children have false knowledge. It's this kind of the implication here, false knowledge. Did any of your kids have false knowledge growing up? Did they, all, did they at one point in time when they were very little say, I'm the boss to you? Have you ever had a little kid about this tall, tell them that you're, they're the boss? It's there. So there are two building programs going on right now in the world. Two building programs. History is repeating itself over and over again. There's nothing new under the sun. There are workmen working, building either a tower or a church. There are workmen e building either a tower or a church. So let me, let me give you what I'm thinking here. First, we'll talk about the tower, the tower city. Genesis chapter 11, we read this. Now the whole earth used the same language and the same words. It came about as they journeyed east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar and settled there. They said to one another, Come, let us break bricks and burn them thoroughly. They used bricks for stone and they used tar for mortar. They said, Let us build for ourselves a city and a tower whose top will reach into heaven. Let us make for ourselves a name. Otherwise we will be scattered abroad and over the face of the whole earth. The Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built. Behold, the Lord said, Behold, they are one people, and they have all the same language, and this is what they have begun to do. Now nothing which they purpose to do will be impossible for them. Come, let us go down, and there confuse their language, so that they will not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad, and from there over the face of the whole earth, and they stopped building the city. Therefore the name was called Babel. Because there the Lord confused the language of the whole earth, and from there the Lord scattered them abroad over the face of the whole earth. So in verse 4 here, just to point this out, this is, this is interesting language. They said, come let us. Who else had said that? Let us make man in our own image. So here we have let us build for ourselves a city, a tower whose top will reach into heaven. Let us, this is the people, the gathered people, mankind, saying that we will be the ones. We will make a name. We'll build a city. City is a gathering. A gr it's a guarded place. It's, it's like uh, if anybody watches football today, it used to be you went to the stadium. Now it's got to have a name on it, naming rights. Uh, I really laugh because there was one stadium that had FTX on it. It went bankrupt a couple of weeks ago. They got rid of the name real fast. Well, that's mankind with God. Mankind is bankrupt before God because God has naming rights because he's God. But mankind, made in his image, thinks that way, thinks about naming rights. I claim this. How many towns are named after somebody? Jamestown. Well, who was that named after? It wasn't any old James. It was a king. Georgia. Who was that named after? King George. It's funny that this mankind does that. He, he, he builds, he pulls towards himself. So though scattered for millennia, mankind, humanity has a desire to draw together, work towards, let us build a city. Do you see this happening? Let us build a city. 
that reaches to the heavens. This will have its culmination in a great worldwide confrontation with the one creator. And I'm just going to pull one verse, a couple verses out of Revelation. The rest of mankind who were not killed by these plagues, so you know there's something before this, right? Did not repent of the works of their hands. They are workmen. There's work going on building this city. So as to not worship demons and the idols of gold and of silver and of brass and of stone and of wood. Which, they can ne which can neither see nor hear nor walk, and they did not repent of their murders, nor their sorceries, nor their immorality, nor their thefts. We are watching the enshrinement of death in the abortion thing. We are watching this. There, it's, 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 it's one of the values that goes out from the Western world to the rest of the world. This is mankind again saying, we are in charge. We will build this city. So this is looking at the big picture. And, and in actual living out the life in this big picture where we live here in northern Wisconsin, just like anywhere else the church is at, it's kind of messy to live in this world. It's babblish, that's what I would call it. It's babblish, it is confusing, it is, there's this hard things here. There's being work done to build the city of humanity that has no room for the I am. Or as John starts his gospel, in the beginning was the word. And it has no place for the word. Now, I can illustrate this a little bit about mankind is that, again, oh, what a triumph. And I've and I got to be careful. I don't want to be sarcastic about this because um, this, there's genuine effort here. So a couple months ago, uh, NASA sent up a, a little spaceship, and it's, it was designed to hit an asteroid. They picked out an asteroid. And they took this little spaceship up there, launched it up there, this satellite, and they put it on a trajectory to hit this asteroid. And then they wanted to study to see if they could deflect it. Why do they want to do that? To save this planet. And then there are people like Elon Musk, who want to colonize Mars. Why do they want to colonize Mars? <laughs> to save humanity. To put humanity out somewhere else because this place is going to eventually collapse. They want to save humanity. So then I got a real good chuckle two weeks ago when I read about a NASA scientist why we haven't contacted any other intellectual life so far outside of our planet. His conclusion, they blew it. They didn't take, take what was needed to survive. They went extinct. I'm like, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? That's, that's your explanation why? Because, but, and, and the hubris was, we cannot fail. We have to do what it takes to save our world. That's mankind. Who gave him those abilities? I believe God did. God is, in, God is the one who created man to be this king of the earth. And we have not really been very good kings of it. It says in, in Psalm 2, says, the Lord looks at all this, and what does he do? He laughs. Oh, you foolish people. Come to me. All you who are weary and heavy laden, I'll give you rest. That's what Jesus says. Come to me. But this mankind has got this burning heart to say, no, we can do it. We'll do it ourselves. So there's work going on around us to do this. Now, not everybody's fully engaged in, in such a way as to build satellites and do all that kind of stuff, but there's this part in mankind where we can do it. 
And how many of us even wrestle that in our little solar systems of our own, our own lives, you know? I can do this myself. I don't need anybody else. No, we need each other. That's one of the great, beautiful things about the church is that we have each other. We have our God and we have each other in him. And that's what we build on. So we've been looking at Ephesians 2.10 about we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works which he prepared before and that we should walk in them. And we walk in them. And I would, I would come back and say this as well. Mankind, because, <laughs> mankind was created by God. He, he, cannot, he cannot create things that, that God hasn't already put into place. He only has the material that God has given even down to the, to the makeup of our, who we are as people. So even mankind has, has the hope for faith, hope, and love. But it's a faith, hope, and love that's founded on humanity, not on God. So in Ephesians, um, we find out the second workman is that we are. We are his church, created in Christ Jesus for good works. And as his, as his workmen, we are building the church under Jesus' direction. That's what we're doing. We're building the church here. This is us. And that's what I want to focus on. I'm mostly interested at this point, how does this apply to the local church or in, in the kingdom of God, and how does that apply to us as Grace Bible Fellowship? Well, the New Testament applies at the local level. What God has given us, the word he's given us, applies here. It works here, and we need to work in it. So the crucial question then becomes, how do we produce faith, hope, and love, the true measure of the church? Because that's, that's our building, in some ways, that's our building material, faith, hope, and love. How do we do that? How do we build with those, those beautiful, beautiful things? Because we're not our, you know, the church is not its structures. It's not this structure. It's not some. It's not the cathedrals. It's not the. It's not even the denominational structures. These are all functional things that help the church do what it does. But it isn't the church, as we know. We've heard it over and over again. We are the church. The people of the church. But we use this building. We use denominational structures. We use these things to further the gospel. And this is our work, building the church. Are we involved in building the church more than just here? Yes, we are. How do we do it? For the most part, it's through our prayers for our, the missions that we support. We have certain people that we focus on. Other churches have other people they focus on. But we, we, build, we're, we desire to build the church. That's, that's the Christian's heart. Following their, his Lord and Savior, the Christian says, let me build. Let me, be in the, let me be the church. Let me be the church. So just listen to this prayer that I read from the Apostle Paul in Ephesians. Beautiful prayer. See if you can see how this fits into building the church. For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with power through his spirit in the inner man, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, and that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, to know the love of Christ which surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled up to all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly beyond all that we ask or think according to the power that works within us, to him be the glory in the church, in Christ Jesus, to all generations forever and ever. So that, I think that applies to this generation as well. So he mentioned faith, he mentioned hope, but I never saw the word hope there, but that's exactly what he ends up with in his prayer. Now to him who's able to do far more abundantly than we ask and think. That's just one aspect of the hope that we have. So to grow the church is to grow in faith, hope, and love. And this is God's workmanship working. This is how, this is the workmanship that he's given to us 
Uh, we are his workmanship, his cabinets, if you want to say, his tables. I don't, you know, I, his body is the best way. This is Paul. We are his body, local body here, and we all have parts to it, and we all have something to do. This is faith, hope, and love at work. But it's interesting because Paul also starts this off, I think, um, Somewhere in here, I, I lost sight of it, but I, I've started to watch this pattern again. Genesis 126, let us make man in our image. And then mankind says, let us build a city. So there's something about this term, this little let us. It's, it's, a, it's direction. It's, 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 the, it's the focus of what a church is supposed to be, is to be a let us kind of place. And so, 1 John 4, 7, here's this phrase again. Behold, let us love one another, for love is from God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. God is with us. God is with his church. God is with Grace Bible Fellowship. Let us love one another. It's the, again, it's the building of these things, the building by faith, hope, and love together in one body. Romans 12, 4, and 5. For just as we have many members in one body, all the members do not have the same function. So we who are many are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. So when you look around to the people around you, you, you say, God chose them as he chose me. And then God gave us together to be there for each other, to build one another up, to let us, let us love one another. It's the building again. It's the idea of, of God's entering into our world through the Lord Jesus Christ into this cracked pot, and now we have opportunity to be a vessel of his love, to those around us. But it starts within us, too. Let us love one another. So, again, I'm just going to go over these building materials, these three major building materials that we work with as a church, as believers together. Faith. Faith is, is literally just trusting in God. Now, does mankind also practice faith? Yes, it does. Right now, what I'm, what I'm watching, what I'm seeing, maybe you, I think you can see this with me, mankind is trusting and puts a lot of faith in science. There's a great faith in science. What can science do? Well, science, I certainly could not get a little spaceship to go up find that, that asteroid out there in the solar system somewhere and run into it at 22,000 miles an hour or whatever it was. Uh, Keith probably can't even build it. You know, I'd probably use wood, and I don't know. I don't think that'd go very far. But collectively, and I'm, I, I don't know about you, but I am amazed at what, what, what mankind has, is doing and has done. What we... <laughs> 50 years ago, we put somebody on the moon, and now we just shot up another one out there without any people in it. But they're hoping for something better, and they say that by the end of this decade, they're going to have people living on the moon. I don't, I'm not surprised anymore by some of these things. But where I come back to is, who gave him that ability? God did. And mankind doesn't want to trust God. What does mankind want to trust? Himself. They've been meeting in Egypt about the climate. And just like mankind, they argue with each other. Um, there's many places in the world, brothers and sisters, want what you have here in the United States. They want it. And they've, everybody's kind of copied the same pattern to get it. And now people are saying, boy, if everybody copies that same pattern, we're in trouble. That's, 
So again, they're, they're thinking, they're, the, the mankind is thinking, he's trying to, they're trying to collectively come together and say, how can we save this planet? Because this is really all we have. That's it, this is it. So they have faith in some things, they, they push forward, they trust, even in, in, its, in its brokenness. Romans 1.12. That is that I may be encouraged together. Here's, here's the church's way. That I may be encouraged together with you while among you, each of us by the other's faith, both yours and mine. So the church builds itself up by the, the intermingling of our trust in God together. How many times have you had to have somebody come alongside you at a dark moment and say, hey, I'm with you. We're going to trust God together. That's what we do. We're going to trust God together. I'm, your faith may be down right now. My faith may be down some other time. But together, we're going to trust God. And we build one another up. We pull each other up by our trust. First Thessalonians 5.11. Therefore, encourage one another and build one another up, just as you also are doing. That's, that's an assignment. That's, that's part of our work. Not to tear our faith down, but to build our faith up together. Now, there's, we're going to look at this a little bit in one, one chapter next week that I think pulls this kind of thing out really, really well. Therefore, encourage one another, build one another up. You know, how do we do that? Let us, you can almost say, let us build one another up. So this is faith. This is the trust in the living God. There's no escaping that simple, that simple term. Trust the living God. Trust the Creator. Trust the Savior. Trust is part of this. It's what we build with. The second thing that we build with is hope. Hebrews 10, 23 and 24. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. Let us consider how to stimulate one another to love and good deeds. So already you should have seen a pattern here, this term one another. It's just one word in the Greek, alon. Alelon, alelon, alelon. It's a reciprocal pronoun. It's the idea of gathering together, doing together. It's together. It is, it is the building, one of the primary building materials that we do as in the faith. We do this with each other, one anothering one another. <laughs> That's what we do. We want another in the faith. We want another in hope. We consider how to stimulate one another to love and good deeds, to do the work of the, of the ministry, to do the faith. Do the faith in Jesus Christ. Because we are not building a city. We are building a church. That's what we're working on. Hope also in James uh, 5.16 Here's one another thing. Therefore, confess your sins to one another. Pray for one another so that you may be healed. The effective prayer of a righteous man can accomplish much. As far as I can tell, that righteous man is, is the same man that's up in verse 16. Therefore, confess your sins to one another. Pray for one another so that you may be healed. This is one of the scary things about one another is when you're so real with another brother and brother sister that you confess your sins one to another. But in doing so comes the strength that is needed to combat the things that we know we have to, the things that tear us down. The sin that has the great power is the sin that's hidden. But when it's opened up to the light, when it's revealed, it loses its power. Many a man and a woman in the church has been afraid to say something to somebody else about uh, something that they have, a, 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 and I'm going to call it what it is, a sin that they just have a hard time with. And by God's grace and mercy, they finally find somebody and they open up to them. And they, they're so afraid of rejection. They're so afraid that this person's going to think less of them and they get enveloped by a bear hug and say, I have the same thing. Let us together walk to the Lord together. Let us go to our high priest together, the Lord Jesus Christ.
There is no sin. There is no way, anything that can keep us as long as we are willing to confess and go to him. And he will heal. This is what we build the church on. We build it on faith. We build it on the hope, the promises that he's given, the promises over our sin, visited with the gospel on a daily basis. Thank you, Lord, for loving me, forgiving me. Now, Lord, help me to forgive those who I need to forgive. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. It's, 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 a, it's a practice. It is a practice. Forgiveness is a practice. It's a discipline. Rooted in the gospel. And, of course, Paul says uh, the greatest of these is love. These remain faith, hope, love. The greatest of these is love. And so love is, is really the language um, that the church needs to practice. Here again, is mankind and humanity practicing love? See, that I, want us to, I want us to see that because man is, is, is created by a creator, man is creative. Man creates all kinds of things, but he also creates all kinds of ideas, but he also creates within the, what he's already known, and mankind pursues some kind of faith, some kind of hope, and some kind of love. And right now, the love that I'm starting to see is that the love for, if you want to have that lifestyle, we're not here to judge you. You just keep it, and we'll all do this together. You go do that. You love that. I love this. We'll be fine. Let's do it together. So it's a quasi-love because it's really only a, you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. But mankind cannot maintain that. Mankind cannot maintain that. Because the one thing that puts man right is his creator. <coughs> and so this acceptance of all the lifestyles, the sexual lifestyles and all this kind of stuff, it has only one projection. And that's a rebellion against the God who created them. That's its only projection. And man will turn against man. But man doesn't, he, there's a desire for humanity to come together, save himself. <laughs> Maybe you think I'm being a little too philosophical. I don't think so. From Genesis to Revelation, the message is Jesus Christ. From creation to recreation, from brokenness to healing all under the banner of God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, the self-existent one. Now, I take my stand on that. I know, I know that in, in talking to people within the community these last months and stuff, I know there's different philosophy out there than that. I know there is. But I'm not ashamed of the gospel or is the power of God to save. From faith to faith. So the last building and greeting I take from 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 22 and 23. Since you have an obedience to the truth, purified your souls for a sincere love of the brethren. Fervently love one another from the heart. Fervently. Fervently. That's not what the Packer fans were like at the end of the game on Thursday. They were not fervent. They were mourning. <laughs> the other team was fervent. In fact, they got so fervent, they drank alcohol on the plane home and got in trouble. Morons. <laughs> For you have been born again, not of a sea which is perishable, but imperishable. I'm the son of Elmer and Marie Vick. This will perish. But 50 years ago, the Lord Jesus Christ came into my life. It will not perish. That is through the living, enduring Word of God. So, again, faith, hope, and love, 
are being built around us and by the, those building this kind of tower thing. Then, um, but we are not that. We are of the, of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are building his church. We are part of his church. I will build my church. We are his workmen in that process, building his church. So there's a, there's a great counterfeit that's out there. Counterfeit, that's all mankind can really do is counterfeit. And he makes some pretty good looking bills. They pass, a lot of stuff that passes for currency of life created by man looks pretty good. It works pretty well sometimes. But it cannot withstand the judgment. It cannot withstand the accounting. Paul says it this way. For a while we were still helpless. At the right time Christ died for the, anybody know what the term is? Christ died for the ungodly. Not the good, the ungodly. And then Paul says this. For one will hardly die for a righteous man, though perhaps for a good man someone would dare even to die. Verse 7 happens, I'm I'm sure it happens more than we realize. People laying down their lives for somebody else in the world in in, in a situation. It's probably happened in Ukraine in the war. We certainly have read stories of people putting their lives on the line and then dying to save a plane or dying to save a child on the ice or something like that. So mankind has this, you, you'll see it, mankind has this built into him, this desire to, to rescue. But he cannot rescue himself. But God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. Coming to terms with our, who we are is, is really the important part of life. Come to terms with who you are. Who are you? The gospel has the answers. I am created in the image of God. I have a breath, I have a spirit within me. I have a soul. I crave things that are just beyond here. There's something that reaches out and desires more than just this. I have hungers and I have appetites. I want them satisfied. So I go looking for them. So many things that I eat don't don't satisfy after a while. They, They seem to go away. So I keep looking. And then I recognize I can't do it. There's no, I, I, there's no, everything I've tried doesn't work. Everything I look for goes up in smoke. And God in his mercy gives us the word. The one who also has experienced everything that we've experienced and yet without sin, the Lord Jesus Christ. And he is offered to anybody who will receive him and to receive what he can only give, which is fulfillment of our souls. So in speaking this in a, in a series of messages on the workman's tool kit, um, so far I haven't talked about a lot of, you know, well, you pull that tool out and you put it over here and you do that and you put it away and you're done. Because in some ways you were never done. But we have what we need. God has given us everything that we need to live in him and to live with each other in him and to live in such a way as to show him to those around us who don't have him. It's all there. But I want you to be aware, I hope today to make you aware that there are two built, two workmen working. Mankind, humanity is working, building this tower, building this way, trying to save himself. 
we know that God is working through Christ Jesus and that Christ is coming again and that things will be recreated, reformed. So the question I have is, which team do you want to work for? Who do you want to work for? You have a choice which, which team you want to work for. And I pray that us, Grace Bible Fellowship, that we will say yes to the kingdom more and more and more and more. Find out ways in which we can engage ourselves in the kingdom work. Knowing our time is short and knowing there are many yet who need the Lord Jesus Christ. They need to hear, they need to repent, they need to believe. They don't need to be squeezed into the mold of just exactly like we are. They need to be in Christ Jesus. So, one of the big things about being a workman in this way is this, um, these two little phrases. Let us one another. It's a purpose statement. Let us. Let us. It's together. Let us one another, one another. My nose is all pulled up right there. One anothering each other. I know that's not a, a term that we, we tend to think about very much. Well, I'll take that back. We like things to go our way. So as long as people are doing what we want, we're one anothering then. But God does something amazing with this one another thing. Is he teaches us how to lay our lives down for each other. And in so doing, we find our life. That's God's way. So Grace Bible Fellowship, let us one another. Amen? He will teach us. He will show us. He has shown us. He will keep showing us. We need to walk in it together. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for my church. I call it my church, and Lord, I want to use that possessive pronoun. I use it in the most loving way I can. Not because I own them. They are a gift. And I pray that we would know that we're a gift to one another. I believe today, Lord, there are, there's some healing that can go on with some one another's. I know of a, a, number, a, a few people in our church who right now have, have strained relationships. And Lord, I, I just ask for your mercy to just visit them, bind their hearts together in the cross of Jesus Christ, and that in so doing, the enemy is pushed out and your love comes in. Lord, in your mercy, grant us such a church, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.